Hey there, it's Alex from Inside Gadgets. Today we're going to be looking at the ATtiny 85 and how we can put in a 32 kilohertz swatch crystal to get some precise timing. So we've got the ATtiny 85, the 32 kilohertz crystal, our LED, and the USB Tiny uh, ISP, which we'll be using to program the ATtiny 85. And at the moment, it's just running a simple uh, blinking LED for one second and then turning off for a second as well. I've got the ATtiny85 data sheet open up at the moment and we're going to hop over to the uh, system clock section and we need the low frequency crystal oscillator and it says here to use the 32 kilohertz watch crystal we just need to change one of the views um, and then it says we should connect it as seen in this diagram um, so to these pins it uh, shows these capacitors in this uh, circuit however it uh, says down here that um, since we're selecting this mode of operation it actually provides internal load capacitance of this much to the first pin and this much to the second pin so now that we know which fuses need to be changed we can go ahead and do that so it's just uh, this the clock needs to be changed so we'll change it to low frequency and to we want uh, the good uh, stable startup time so we'll select that one now what you also need to remember to do is to actually untick this one divide clock by 8 so now we're actually going to get that uh, 32 kilohertz signal as the clock and now we just take note of the fuses to supply uh, to AVR dude so we've got our AT tiny 85 and the USB Tiny ISP uh, connected to it, ready to be programmed. Um, and we've just got our 32 kilohertz clock, which we haven't plugged in at the moment. So we're going to go ahead now and copy these uh, the fuses to put into AVR Dude. And but let's just uh, firstly just do a test um, to just make sure that we can communicate to the device. So um, P just means the eight, which which microcontroller and sees our USB tiny so we'll just hit enter on that and yep we can communicate okay to it so we're going to go ahead and uh, paste in the uh, arguments to set just double check that that's all good and we'll hit enter on that and it's all good now if I were to um, we haven't got the uh, haven't got the 32 kilohertz connected at the moment and if we go to hit enter on that it's because it doesn't have a clock source. So we've plugged in the 32 kilohertz crystal um, and now we're going to try um, doing this again to see if it can communicate to it and you'll find that uh, it still can't. What uh, The reason being is that uh, with by default AVR dude I'm not too sure how fast it talks to it but it's um, too fast for the 32 kilohertz crystal so we need to set the clock speed down a bit so we'll put it to 250 I think is um, a good recommended speed so let's try that out and uh, yes looks like we can communicate okay to it so now that we've programmed the ATtiny 85's fuses we need to look into the next step which is the timer the ATtiny 85 has two timers timer 0 and timer 1 both are 8 bits the way the timers work is that it takes that 32 kilohertz clock signal and since it's 8-bit you have 256 values so if you were feeding that pure 32 kilohertz signal um, there's a calculation that you can do to find out how many milliseconds would pass um, after that timer would overflow so it would get up to 255 and then when it goes to to add another one to it, it will go back to zero and that's what it's called an overflow. There's actually uh, a formula that we can use that I've got up here. So here's the um, 256 values and here's the clock and they've got what's called a prescaler. So that's where you can um, divide the clock by however much needed. So instead of you could say divide it by two and then you would get double it would take double the amount of time for that uh, the overflow to occur. So let's go and check out what kind of um, prescalers we can use with timer zero. So let's expand that and find 
here we go so we've got these different prescalers we can use so let's go ahead and uh, try these uh, in our formula so let's just start off with uh, let's just start off with no prescaling so that would be one so we'll be able to find out um, when an overflow will, will, would occur so let's bring up our calculator and so it would be 256 divided by 32 actually I've got this wrong that's better and six, eight. so each overflow would happen um, 7.8125 milliseconds so that happens it's 7.8 milliseconds each overflow so if we wanted to calculate say a second for an example we would just need to divide 1000 milliseconds by that and we would get 128 uh, overflows so that's one way to do that so if we wanted to um, keep a track of how many overflows would take how many overflows it would take for a second to pass it would be 128 so we'll, we'll just need a um, just a simple variable to keep track of that but what if we don't want to don't want to keep track of that so let's keep uh, increasing this one let's go to 64 so we'll do the calculation divide 32.678 and here we get uh, 500 milliseconds so now all, all we need to do is times that by two overflows so now we can uh, get 1000 so we can jump to 256 and by our mouth that should uh, give us two seconds yeah two seconds so if you wanted to do um, 500 milliseconds or two seconds this would be the way to do it with the, either these two but we want to do one second uh, precisely so this timer zero won't suit us so let's jump over to timer one and uh, have a look at what that can do so we've got timer one up at the moment and we can see that before we only had 64 and 256 and now we've got the 128 so let's do the calculation for that one so it would be 128 times 256 divide 3 and that gives us one second precisely so each overflow that would each overflow we would make trigger and interrupt and that would mean that one second has progressed now there's actually a, a nice website that I found that actually um, can calculate this for us so we can just put in the system clock frequency and so the timer is 8-bit and now we just need to find out so we, if we wanted to find how many seconds um, it would be so the overflow count for one second at a prescaler of 1 would be 128 as we found out before 64 would be two overflows this one would be so it would be 128 and so we, if we change that to two seconds then it would be precisely one overflow but we want to change that back and if we select 128 then it would give us our one overflow so let's go ahead and take a look at the code we've just got the standard uh, fcpu defined here which is for our 32 kilohertz clock the includes um, where to connect the resistor and led we've got the um, volatile led state which uh, needs to be a volatile to put it to put this uh, variable in ram because the interrupt's going to be changing that uh, that variable and so we start off the main we go into the setup so let's open that up um, and we first thing we do turn on the interrupts next thing is to set the prescaler to 128 as as I showed before and what I uh, didn't show is that we actually need to enable the timer one overflow interrupt so let's go and have a look at that and so all we need to do is just set that bit to on just here if we didn't do that then um, we'd, we'd never get that overflow to happen so we'll go back into our code and so we've done all that let's go into uh, this one so we set the LED as an output I'm just turning on the pull up resistors on the other pulse to save some power and just our while loop which uh, if the LED state variable is on we turn on the LED otherwise we turn it off and we just go into the idle sleep mode now you, uh, since we're using the 32 kilohertz clock and we're going to be continuing to 
use that for the timer. We actually, the only mode that we can use is actually idle. There's ADC and there's also um, power off modes, but I'll just show you here that it just says here that the three different modes idle, ADC, and uh, power down. Um, even though it says ADC, the main clock is enabled, we actually have our wake up sources, and for us, it actually is other input output, it's the timer, so we need to specify that as idle. Otherwise, if we were to use ADC, it wouldn't wake up. So let's go back over here, and um, that's pretty much it. This is just the uh, interrupt for timer one, and uh, when that's when the interrupt happened, it just does um, the opposite of what bled state is. So if it was zero, it changes it to one. If it was one, it changes it to zero. And that's pretty much it. So now we're ready to program the ATtiny85. Um, we just need to remember in the make file to add the dash B250, like we did when we were um, setting the fuse bits uh, in AVR Dude so that we can communicate to the ATtiny85 since it's running at a lower clock speed. So let's go ahead and um, just uh, just compile that and we'll start uploading it. So I've connected the power and now the ground to the LED and it looks to be blinking uh, every second. Thanks for watching.